Oh, we got a lot of seats in the front, so come on in. All right. All right, it's official. Welcome to Lend It 2013. <laughs> this is not just another conference. This isn't even just the inaugural online lending conference. This is the future of global banking. My name is Dara Albright. I'm founder of Now Street, and I'm a proud co-producer of Lend It. In my 21 years on Wall Street, I had the privilege of organizing some pretty groundbreaking events. And I have to say that the enthusiasm for this event today is unlike anything I had ever seen before. And I believe that's a result of two factors. One, the massive desire for economic and market transformation. And two, the enormous impact that P2P is making on the global credit markets. I'm so honored today to be surrounded by so many of the P2P and online lending pioneers. You guys possess the vision that, that make this day a reality, you know, make these markets a reality. And I'd really like to just thank you all for being here and thank all the participants, all the attendees for being here. Um, you know, just to, 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 you know, really thank everyone individually, I just want to say first, you know, I really want to thank our speakers who so, gen who so generously share their wisdom and their insight, our sponsors who make events like this economically possible, and of course our attendees, most of you made up of, of, in, of investors who provide the funding that makes emerging and developing markets like this actually thrive. And of course all of the uh, leading and emerging online lending portals that are helping capital flow once again to consumers, to students, to entrepreneurs and to innovators across the globe. And finally I'd like to thank my co-hosts, Jason Jones, uh, um, partner at Disruption Credit, and Peter Renton, founder of Lend Academy. I can't tell you how much of an honor it is to work with you guys, and it just, I mean, I think you, I, I can't tell how much I just really admire and respect your work. I think you guys are just incredible. Um, we're just gonna do a little bit of uh, some housekeeping before I turn the mic over to Peter. Um, just. That's us. <laughs> uh, a couple of notes. First, we are uh, broadcasting this live. We're, we're trying to get that straightened out, but it will, it will ultimately be live. We're also filming the entire thing. Um, so we'll make that also available in case you miss any of the presentations. You also will have access to all of it um, at the conclusion of, of the show. Um, especially for anyone that missed any parts of the of the presentations or discussions. Um, we do have Wi-Fi in the area. The Wi-Fi is uh, convene, uh, the, the signal is convene meeting. Convene conference center. Convene conference center, and the code is meetings. Lowercase. Lowercase, all lowercase. Um, the bathrooms are by the front um, of the reception. Um, and we are going to try and, and adhere as much as we can to the schedule because I'm in big trouble with Jason if we don't. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the speaker, please, everyone, keep you know to the to the schedule time allowed. And uh, right across the hall, so w when the presenters finish and finish their segment, right across the hall, we're going to have um, breakout sessions. And we're, we'll be able to just continue the flow, continue the discussions, and continue the dialogue. So, you know, feel free to then, you know, move around and, and, um, and then move out to the breakouts if you have further questions. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand the mic over to... With, oh, and, and workshops. So the, in your program, you'll see there's also a schedule for workshops. That's in the Rockefeller North Room on the side. Those will start um, probably, uh, yeah, about 10.50 those will start. Um, it just takes kind of a deeper dive into some of the discussions, and they're all outlined in, in your package as well. Um, and I, I think that's, that's about it. Okay. So anyway, let's get started. So for those of us who have been around this industry for any length of time, our keynote speaker this morning needs no introduction. He, he is the founder and CEO of Lending Club. He's taken this company from just an idea in his head through to today, where in the next couple of weeks, they're gonna cross $2 billion in loans issued. They are the undisputed um, world leader in online lending 
and we are, I'm, I'm really excited actually to hear this presentation this morning. So without any further ado, I would like you to welcome Renaud LaPlanche. Thank you, Peter. <clears throat> so I've been, um, over the last couple of years, I've been walking around and saying that Lending Club is planning to transform the banking system. Um, and, and amazingly, um, nobody has really uh, asked me, OK, what do you actually mean by that? Uh, so I've been getting away with, with that catchphrase uh, for a couple of years now. And uh, Peter, as, as always, has been uh, the, the one asking the right questions and uh, asked me to elaborate on, uh, OK, what, how exactly are you uh, planning to uh, transform the banking system? Um, so let me tell you uh, more about, about our plans. I'll give you, uh, give you a, a chance to uh, read the disclaimer, if you can, and that's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so <laughs> taking a step back and, and looking at the sort of history of, of innovation and, and disruption in, in other industries than, than banking and consumer lending, um, we all have a sense that um, technology is, um, is going faster and the, the pace of innovation is going faster. And certainly, if you measure the time it took for uh, electricity to be uh, getting 100% penetration um, in, in um, households, it took a lot more time than uh, sort of more recent um, uh, more, more, more recent inventions. But when you take a closer look at the data and more granular look at the data, it, it gets really interesting. And, um, and you see that, for example, someone who was born um, at the end of the 19th century, um, when, when the telephone became uh, commercially available, uh, actually had little chances to own a telephone within his lifetime. Uh, and now fast forward to some of the most recent innovations. Um, someone who was born um, just four or five years ago uh, has more than a 50% chance of uh, seeing a tablet computer uh, in, in, uh, in, their, in their home um, we, by the time that person is age four or five, five year old. Um, so we, there's been a, a big acceleration and, and, and innovation is, is getting adopted um, faster and technology innovation is getting adopted faster. Um, so it's interesting to look at how incumbents uh, typically react to innovation. And, and the typical pattern is that incumbents react uh, too late and do, do too, too little too late. Uh, and certainly Borders launched an e-book store uh, that, that was a couple of years before filing for bankruptcy. Uh, blockbusters started shipping um, DVDs uh, like, ne like Netflix did, uh, but that was also too little too late and, and, and couldn't prevent Blockbuster from um, um, being overtaken by Netflix and, and, and also filing for, for bankruptcy a few um, uh, years later. Um, <clears throat> And, and so the, what's interesting about innovation is um, the, the, the incumbents also um, not only sort of, uh, create uh, new products and, and, and better, better service, better value for, for consumers, um, but also uh, very often spur a, a cycle of innovation. And some of the incumbents do try to, uh, to compete. And certainly we wouldn't have a, a Nook uh, reader today uh, launched by, by Barts and Noble if Amazon hadn't launched a, a Kindle. And then the Nook uh, created a incentive for Amazon to push the envelope further and, and release the Kindle Fire. Um, we're also seeing benefits for consumers um, in terms of pricing. So um, just in the last holiday season, uh, Target and, and Best Buy uh, decided to match Amazon prices for, for, for that season. Um, so you see a, a really a positive impact on, on consumers, both in terms of, of product and services, but also in terms of, of pricing. So looking more closely now at, at the sector that's of particular interest to us, which is the financial sector, um, the, the financial sector has grown um, quite, quite rapidly over the last 60 years, uh, less so in, in the last 10 years, uh, but, but basically grew from less than 3% of, of the GDP uh, to now about 8% and is now the largest industry in, in the US. Um, and, and despite of that fast growth, uh, we haven't seen a lot of innovation coming from 
the, 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 the large banks coming from the incumbents. Uh, a lot of the uh, innovation in the financial sector actually has come from outside of, um, of the large banks. Um, so the, the, the first credit card, uh, arguably the, the, larger, the, the biggest innovation uh, in, in banking in the last century uh, came from, from Diners Club. Uh, the ATM uh, was um, proposed by its inventor to, to Citibank in the 30s, uh, was rejected, uh, and, and, and the, the was finally adopted by, by the banking industry much later in, in, the, in the 60s. And, and more recently, we've seen a large number, hundreds of mobile payment companies um, really spurring another wave of, of innovation, in, in particular in, in, uh, in, uh, in mobile banking, that has seen a very fast growth, a 50% year-over-year growth, um, with companies like Check uh, really changing um, bill payments, with companies like Square um, helping uh, push the adoption of, um, of uh, credit card payments for, for smaller merchants, and, and GoBank really releasing the, the first truly native uh, mobile uh, banking application. So a lot of innovation, uh, but coming from outside of, uh, uh, of the, um, the industry leaders, outside of the incumbents, not being driven by, uh, by the incumbents, as we've seen in other, in other sectors. The other thing that has happened to, uh, to banking over the last uh, few decades is that large banks have really taken over retail banking. And uh, a handful of banks uh, now represent the majority of, of, uh, of retail lending. Uh, and that's particularly true in uh, credit cards, where the seven largest issuers represent over 75% of outstanding receivables. Um, and, and, and what we've seen partially as a result of that concentration um, is um, that, that the credit card uh, balances have certainly grown um, very fast in, in the last 30 years, uh, up until a peak in 2008, um, and has um, uh, slightly uh, slowed down since, uh, but still represent about $850 um, billion. And, uh, but the, the, the benefit of that growth has really gone to the issuers, not so much to consumers, with uh, the cost of credit card and the spread between credit card rates and the risk-free rate having increased considerably over the last 30 years, going from a 200 basis point spread of a treasury to now a 14, um, uh, 1,400 uh, basis point. Uh, so if you look at the actual interest paid by consumers uh, over uh, the risk-free interest rate, it was 1.2 trillion in the uh, 80s, um, and it went up to 10.8 trillion in, uh, in the 2000s decade uh, as a result, again, of balances increasing, but also the spread uh, increasing and, and credit cards becoming really more, more expensive for consumers. So on top of uh, high interest rates on, on credit cards, what we've seen is the banks uh, driving profitability in recent years through additional fees and cost cutting. And the cost cutting really um, have not helped with customer satisfaction. Um, the, um, if you look at the NPS, so the net promoter score in the banking industry, you find that um, the large banks um, are really net detractors um, by, by, by a pretty big margin and have a, a net promoter score in the single digit, uh, which is particularly low. Uh, and credit cards um, are also in the uh, credit card issuers are also in the single digit. Uh, in comparison, regional banks, community banks, and, and credit unions are doing a much better job at serving their customers, uh, delivering value to their customers, and, um, and keeping them happy. So, so we, what we're seeing in the banking sector is really the, so the, a concentration with the large, the big banks representing the majority of the industry, a handful of, of banks representing the majority of the industry, um, and and a model that's really um, um, <coughs> characterized with uh, a lot of cost, a large branch network, a lot of IT legacy systems, and the branch networks with the thousands of branches and, and tens of thousands of employees. 
um, that was um, built in order to collect the deposits, uh, but, but fulfills less of that, that function today. Uh, but also a lot of risk in the banking sector. And when I was talking about risks in, in the banking sector in 2007, um, I had a, a weaker case than I do now. I <laughs> think uh, 2008 and 2009 have uh, made uh, the point uh, that the, um, the, the extraordinary amount of leverage in the banking system with the banks being levered up uh, one to eight or one to nine um, is, is creating a tremendous amount of risk in the system. Comes Lending Club. So we've, um, what, we, what we've done is we've really radically transformed um, the way uh, consumer lending operates. We've, uh, we've de-risked it with a perfectly matched um, uh, asset and liability. Uh, with no risk of a run on lending club. Uh, with uh, no inherent leverage uh, in the system. Um, with, and we've also uh, less cost than the banking system. So we have no, no branches. Uh, we use technology to lower cost. And one of our investors has uh, requested a, a study from McKinsey recently that shows um, really line item by line item how lending club drives cost out of the system and how much more efficient we are than, than the banking system. Um, and the result of that survey was that lending club has a 425 basis point cost advantage against the, um, against the, the banks, so 400 basis point um, uh, less cost, and that cost saving can be passed on to both borrowers in the form of lower interest rates and investors in the form of attractive returns. And that has helped us uh, grow in a pretty, pretty consistent way over the last few years. Uh, as Peter mentioned, we um, we, we actually we, we passed our first billion dollars in loans in November last year, so it took us about five and a half years to get to the first billion, and uh, only six and a half months uh, to get to the next billion dollars. So we probably pass uh, a couple of billion dollars um, by early early July. Um, so if you look at uh, sort of total loans outstanding uh, in, in the industry, in the consumer peer-to-peer -peer lending industry, um, that the total loans outstanding have passed also the billion dollars recently, and it, it's closer to 1.2 to 1.3 billion dollars now, with Lending Club representing a, a bit more than 80 percent of that of that total. Um, what's interesting is the, um, so the, the, the loss rate, the, the credit characteristics have become very, very predictable, very repeatable, very, very sustainable. And you can see sort of looking at the, the last few vintages um, how, um, how loss rates have, have performed. Um, and we've also uh, done a good job um, at keeping customers happy and at, at really delivering value to our customers. Uh, unlike the, the big banks, um, they're going to have a NPS score in, in the single digit. Uh, we've recently measured um, our NPS, and, and the reading is 79%. Uh, and that's one of the highest score in, uh, in banking and financial services. Uh, and we're very proud of, of what we've achieved there because that's really our mission, uh, making sure we deliver a great experience to borrowers, uh, which not only serves borrowers well, but also serves investors well, uh, because um, good experience helps uh, create positive selection and attract the kind of borrowers that you want to see as an investor. Um, and investors, uh, as a consequence, have been really flocking to us with uh, so the self-directed retail base uh, growing very nicely and other type of investors uh, joining the platform and, and now the platform having a very diversified investor base, uh, including retail investors, high net worth individuals, family offices, third party fund managers, and uh, direct institutional investors. So the, the future of, uh, of Lending Club, and then I'll talk about how that fits into uh, transforming the, the banking system. So we've, we've started with consumer loans. We are going to start releasing uh, new products in the next year. Um, and we're, we're starting to have teams working on products that we'll be releasing uh, in, in several years from now, including possibly cars, in, insurance products, mortgages, and a number of other products that will, um, that will come in in the next few years um, and, and expand internationally um, to uh, the rest of the planet and beyond. <laughs>
you, you, you heard it for the first time at the landed conference. <laughs> Um, so, so what, what can or, or what we believe should the, the banking industry do um, with respect to, to Lending Club and to the online lending industry? So there, it's interesting to look at other industries and what other incumbents have done. Uh, so if you look at the music industry after the sort of, uh, Napster episode, um, once, once a credible player has come up with a... Um, um, compliant way to uh, to disintermediate or to to, to make the uh, uh, the product directly available to consumers at a lower cost or in a more convenient way. Uh, then the industry has joined that platform, and the music industry has worked with with Apple. It took a few years. Uh, there were uh, bumps on the road, uh, but but that partnership is now working very well. And, and Apple announced recently uh, 25 billion songs downloaded on on, on iTunes. Uh, if you look at what happened in, um, in the retail sector with eBay, um, the, the retail industry and, and, and the manufacturers uh, initially rejected eBay and, and feared eBay as, as, as a new entrant, as a disruptive um, company. Um, but, but more recently, um, sort of car dealers have been working with eBay Motors and selling new cars now on, on eBay. And the retail industry and, and, and um, product manufacturers have increasingly been working on eBay and have really decided to join the platform and benefit. <coughs> benefit from the platform as a more cost efficient, more user friendly way to reach their customers. <clears throat> so we believe that uh, could be a, a model for the banking industry. Um, so when, when you look at the Lending Club platform today, we have the very diverse sources of capital, uh, diverse um, origination channels on, on the borrower side. And we announced uh, this morning, we put a press release on, on the wire this morning, we announced that the first uh, two banks have uh, joined the platform. So the two community banks um, called Congressional Bank and, and Titan Bank out of Maryland and, and Texas. Um, and the, the, these banks and, and the ones that, that will join them uh, over the next few weeks and months um, really are, are benefiting from the platform as a way to acquire assets uh, that they, 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 they could not uh, necessarily originate directly, uh, but also as a way to work better with their own customers. And so in the case of Titan Bank, um, they will uh, sort of contribute their customers to the platform as well and really rely on Lending Club to underwrite, originate, and service these loans uh, in a way that's more cost effective uh, than, uh, than most of the banks would. Um, so we are seeing this as the beginning of a trend um, in which the, um, the banking industry, so starting with, with the community banks that care the most about, about their customers and, and have been doing the, the best job really at, at serving their customers and, and, and keeping them happy and delivering great customer satisfaction. Um, we see them as, as pioneers. I think when we, we look back in a few years, we'll see that Congressional Bank and, and Titan Bank really were the, the first two banks and were pioneers in uh, adopting sort of direct lending as a way uh, to better serve their, their, their customers. Um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and again, will be seen as the uh, uh, first incumbents who um, adopted uh, online lending as, as an innovation. That's all I have today. Thank you. <laughs> time, time, time for questions. Okay. We got time for like one or two questions. <laughs> you get that every time, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> so the question is, uh, when is Lending Club going public? Um, the answer is, uh, we believe we will be ready um, for an IPO sometime next year, so sometime in 2014, um, and we'll decide to, uh, uh, to pull the trigger depending on, on market conditions. Yeah. So you announced that today with the banks. What, what type of uh, negotiations or, or how has that... Do you, how did you get those banks and did they come to you? Did you go to them and how do you see that whole, is that a, a test for you and do you see that going upstream to larger banks and where, where do you see that? Yeah, so we really see that as, as a beginning, see this relationship with these two community banks um, and we initiated these discussions. Are you looking, and are you looking no. for more community banks? Yes, we are looking for more and, and we are in discussions with, with many more. And what's interesting is the, um, the bank's participation 
um, from, from the standpoint of Landing Club is really helping us better serve our, cust better serve our customers and be more helpful to more people because they, they play in a very different uh, part of the credit spectrum than the existing Landing Club investors. Right now there is a lot of interest from individual investors and institutional investors in the more sort of aggressive, in, in the middle of the road and the more aggressive part of the platform. There's actually quite a bit of competition now for, for the loans. Uh, the banks are playing in the part of the platform that's currently not being uh, overcredited by investors, actually has, has very little demand, so sort of the A grade and possibly a double A grade that we would be releasing and, and be able to move up the credit spectrum and, um, and, and have a sort of lower yield, higher credit quality type of loans uh, than, than, than what we're doing now. So do more A grade and, and possibly double A and possibly also go longer in, in duration um, while we are existing customer based and to focus on higher yield, shorter duration. That's, that's actually all we have time for, so it's, thanks, Bruno. All right, thank you.